Hey guys, Aaron here again. Um, this time coming at you guys with the uh, Takamura R2 powdered stainless steel um, Gyoto. Um, do a little bit of just over some slight overview of it, then we'll uh, see cut and performance. Um, the handle is probably one of the best Western handles I've handled in a long while. Granted, I've used a uh, I'm very much used to um, octagonal and D-shaped handles, but this one's really nice. It is on the smaller side, much like the knife. It fits it really nice, so if you have smaller hands, this is actually really nice. Um, you know, it does have that western handle, but it doesn't have the uh, whole chunky, clunky blade guard that uh, German knives have, which is a weight saver, and also you actually get to use the um, <clears throat> full edge. Um, it's actually my first time using R2, and I will say I'm very, very impressed. Um, the first day I got it, I used it just a standard eight-hour shift. Um, I think I just took it and dropped it when I got home real quick. Then the next day, uh, used it again all day. Then what finally killed it was I used it on um, three cases of butternut squash that I had to you know, nip the ends and, you know, chunk it up and such but you know that's still and they were they were smaller size they weren't you know the big big ones you know you probably used to seeing but these were uh these were pretty small there's probably at least 20 per case so that that did cause it some micro chipping but i mean you know and that was on polyboard but that it would still kind of sort of push cut like you know uh, notebook paper you know receipt paper was out of the question but yeah no notebook paper though it would still go through without any problem um, that being said it is a laser profile very thin but um, it's actually really rigid though for a laser which is is really impressive usually you know you can't you know they're not they're pretty pretty um, you know not rigid but this is actually you know pretty pretty solid knife um, and the current edge on here is a just a touched up edge on the um, Kiriyama 8 to 10 K, and like I say, to uh, the, you know, a little over a week ago when I you know, did all that butternut squash with it, that was the last time I actually redid the edge on it. So this thing's um, a week and a half or so old, and I've been using it, you know, a lot lately. You know, trying to get a good feel for it. But um, so we'll see how it works on a couple of bell peppers and an onion. And uh, we'll check a potato here for uh, a non-stick test. That's the problem with kind of lasers, since they are so thin. A lot of the times, they uh, the smiths have to trade off convexing an edge or you know the, the blade, so you might lose a little bit of non-stick properties. But I mean, it, you know, it's it's a trade-off for anything. You know, you get light and nimble as opposed to you know having that non-stick property. But we'll see how how well the how well the uh, grind is on this here in a few minutes. Um, I will say actually, you know, the few other lasers I've used have been mostly um, Konosuke, which, you know, in my humble opinion, they still make some of the best knives out there, if not probably the best. But um, since I have been using this R2, I have I kind of wish that um, the uh, Smiths make this make it in a uh, 240 Gyoto option. But um, after speaking with uh, Mark Richman uh, from Chef Knives to Go, they uh, I guess they are they are in, is interested in making a 240, which is kind of sad because I think that would probably be my go-to laser then and. You know, I tried to really, you know, I won't say stay off the stainless steel bandwagon, but I, I've always had a hard time trying to, you know, get on it, you know, since I, I'm used to, you know, white one, white two, blue two, you know, AS and such, so, it was, you know, it took a little bit of convincing for me to, you know, try this knife, but I'm horribly glad I did. And it's effortless cutter. I mean, this is just 
I'm just basically using the weight of the knife, and this thing is just going right through with any with zero effort. And that's the you know, skin of the pepper, which you know uh, that usually is a pretty good test of higher edges. You know, they can't go through a pepper skin with you know relative ease. Then you do not have a really super sharp knife. Um, oh, about the handle, if I didn't mention this already, um, the western handle, it does actually, the wood on it is rosewood, which is pretty nice. Give you a quick snapshot of that. It's pretty nice. I mean, you know, it's not your standard, you know, uh, whole wood or, you know, such. So, you know, you can, you know, if you know uh, somebody who does handle work and all that, get them to uh, uh, change up the wood if you'd like. But, I mean, other than that, like I say, I mean, the edge retention on it is, is very, very good. I mean, like I say, it surprised me, you know, that it, you know, A, lasted through, you know, so many cases of uh, butternut squash, which, you know, anybody will tell you, you know, given any knife, you know, that's pretty, pretty good. Granted, most people, you know, you think of like a 210 as more like a kind of like a home cooked knife because it is, you know, it is kind of short. It's uh, you know, about eight and a quarter inches, you know, depending on maker and such like that. If they, you know, do it from where they measure. But if you're actually a line cook and, you know, you guys out there know who you are, you know, nine times out of ten, you have almost no room. And, you know, so. It actually would be really nice if you want a stainless knife, you know, it's stainless silver, it doesn't rust, and, you know, something that has very good edge retention. You know, I would I would pick this thing up in heartbeat if you have a shot. But, uh, so, I mean, like I say, I really, you know, think by some happenstance, the uh, Smith is going to watch this. Please consider, reconsider making a 240. You'd, you'd really make my day. But if not, I understand. Oh, and the whole, uh, like, convexing versus uh, flat grind, which, you know, most, most lasers will come with a flat grind because, you know, like I said before, there's just no, you know, there's not the extra material there is in other knives to make it, to give it that convex edge or, you know, from here down and such. So, um, yeah, we'll get a potato here now after the onions real quick and really show you what uh, how its non-stick properties are but uh, like I said there are my the advantages of a laser in my humble opinion you know it just it'll fly right to the product you know you don't have to worry about wedging on it you know if ever you know you know, it just, it, it wants to, it, it's like a Ferrari. It wants to go. So, like I say, if you, if you happen to have the speed, you know, then, I mean... And then you know what I mean by lasers are meant for people who are speed adrenaline junkies with a knife. Um, a potato here. So, potato nonstick test. Let's see. Like I say, I think it's a flat, uh, just a simple flat ground. I could be wrong. I really haven't done too many potatoes with this knife, but we'll see. Let's see. Okay. Little bit, not too too bad. Yeah, see a little bit of stickage there. Yeah, it's a little bit of stickage, which, like I say, that was going to be a given with this knife. It's a laser profile, so 
No, no, no real convexing. Maybe a slight, but like I say, nothing that you'll, you know, make it a super non-stick machine. But like I say, it's a trade-off. You get the performance versus, you know, uh, you know, convex edge. But yeah, for my money, my bang for the buck, I would say if you like lightweight laser knives, go out and get one. But um, anyway, thanks again.